So with me right now to talk about leadership is the, the band, the author of a brand new book out to the, out yesterday, Overcoming Impossible, Learn to Lead, Build a Team, and Catapult Your Business to Success. Robert, welcome. Thank you very much. Hey, this how, is awesome. I didn't even know you were right. You're, you're everywhere, dude. Right. Well, you know, I've the, when Tony Snow went to the White House, do you remember when he became yeah, press yeah, secretary? Yeah. So I was his one of his fill-ins, and I ended up taking over his show. So it's been fun. I mean, radio, you know radio is great. And and you're better than him. Don't tell him I said that. Tony Snow? Yeah, no, that's, that. there's no <laughs> way. So, so, Robert, in particular, you know, people see you on a regular basis talk about leadership, and you now write about it in your book, but you, you, you have a humility about it because you, you learn from your mistakes. How important is it, generally, to show up? I mean, if there's a problem, show up, take the fire, and listen. We don't see that with one catastrophe after another. You've got to stand up. You've got to own the mistakes, even if they're not yours, and you've got to show the country that you care. And uh, that's leadership, right? I talk about empathetic leadership in the book, about listening. Well, you got to listen. We have a country that's divided right now. No kidding. On, on a lot of things. Everything. Look, we've got Iraq. We've got Syria. We've got, you know, all the things that have happened. And now China and Iran. And, you know, I, I listened to a great conversation uh, uh, with Mark Esper you know, uh, talking about, you know... We Former were, Secretary we, of Defense. Yes. And this, we, by the way, this is Robert Irvine. Uh, I great, always said Robert. Great, great friend of mine who... Uh, great, great... West Point Secretary grad. Defense. But, but, but we've got to own these things. We've got to tell the people what's going on. And there's nothing wrong with I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Right. But, but we're afraid to say that. That's an ego thing, right? And I talk about that in the book. Let the ego go and say, look, hey, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. And we're going to do everything possible to find out. And I'll, and I'll give you an example. The Secretary of Transportation was a mayor, Oxford grad, just like our former HUD secretary was a brain surgeon. I have no problem with that. If you go in there, you put the gexes in old guys, right. but leadership and uh, accountability, being a great citizen, service, you can learn it. I mean, you're an Oxford grad who served in the military, you can learn it, but you have to try and you have to show up. Hey, I'm not a chemical expert. What, where is my chemical expert? What's going on? Uh, you look them in the eye and you get a sense and who's lying to you, who's nervous about it. Who's not telling the truth? But you just said something there. Accountability, right? We've got to hold people accountable for, for their actions. Every action has a consequence. And if you don't know, and I say this all the time, I hire A people above me because I don't know the answers to liquor and this and this. you got to tell me what to do because I have no idea. But I'm okay with that, and a lot of people are not okay with that. You know, we hire you know, I'm an A personality, I want a double A. We hire B people, and I talk about this in the book, we hire B people because we don't want to listen to them. It's my way, and, and I don't want to listen to you, so don't talk to me. So one thing about leadership, and you talk about this, be compassionate. Show you care about the person, and they will, they will perform for you. And we see that uh, with great coaches, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, how are you going in your life? You going through a divorce? I understand things are going a little tough. You know, you got cut from such and such. So when you show you care, then that person will be invested in you. But that's the empathetic leadership. I know, look, we have just under 5,000 employees across our 11 companies, right? I need to know that, that Johnny is disabled and he needs this. And I, and because that's, that's my job to understand that because now um, I'm getting a better uh, end result from you. Right. You know, some people like money. Some people might time off. Some people like a pat on the back. We're all different, right? So if you understand your, your workforce and you understand what they need, the company's always successful, regardless of how much money you make because it takes time to build a brand. So if you think of a, a mom and pop restaurant at 300000 then you look at, you know, a $300 million company, the, the problems are the same and they're scalable. And I talk about that in a pancake recipe, funnily enough, in the book about you can't just keep doubling and doubling and hoping that it's going to work out at the end. Right. It doesn't work like that. And, and you know, sometimes you have to admit this is not going to work. The, the, it's not the right location. It, the, the rent is too high. I cannot hire here. We don't have uh, the... Uh, uh, there isn't the, enough people earning to be able to afford a restaurant like this. And I think, look, the restaurant business, the, the, the military business is changing. You know, we talk about this all the time. 
people are not joining the military because the pay is not consumer, the the service is not as good, whatever the reason, right? And when when I can go and do cyber intelligence outside and make three times as much, live in a house that's not moldy and get great food, right? So. It's the same with the hospitality business. Nobody's coming into it because, well, I'm paying you $15 an hour. In fact, in Vegas, I pay $27 an hour for a guy that can't cook. But at least he's there and I can teach him. You know, and I think, I think that's the problem with our workforce right now. We're trying to figure out, you know, do we go to work? Do we work for ourselves? Do we work from home? Or, or, you know, this, this city itself is suffering because people are not working. They're not coming to work. They don't ride the trains. They don't go to the deli for lunch. So they don't go out to eat afterwards. They don't go to the gyms. So it just ripples down. But even we would not, prior to 2019, we wouldn't have had this conversation. You go, well, Brian, of course people are going to work. You know, that whole sense of telecommuting doesn't really work for most industries. But your industry in particular, and talking to John Taffer too, there's very few industries got hurt as hard as the restaurant business. The restaurant business was decimated across the world. Not just, you know, during COVID, I got sick the first couple of days of COVID with food poisoning doing a show. It wasn't the show I was fixing or the restaurant. It was at a golf course. I went to the hospital for two days, came out, pandemic across the world. And literally for three months, sat at home. I'm like, oh, my God. This you kill sat me. at home. I sat at home for three months. It was going to kill me. My Probably wife, worked out like crazy. My wife was outside and I was inside. I actually got COVID on the 4th of July, went in the hospital for six days. There Trouble was, breathing? I couldn't breathe. Yeah, it was awful. Um, there was no there was no vaccines. There's no, it was, you know, hey, suck it up, buttercup, vitamin D and vitamin C, whatever, supplemental air. I came out and I said to Courtney White, who was the president of Food Network, I'm getting three to 4,000 emails a week in hospital. We need to do something. So we got on buses. It was tour buses, six people on a bus. We did 66 episodes of Saving Restaurants, who, by the way, are still in business now. Nobody else was on, on, on the road. Nobody's doing anything. And yet we see more with inflation and, and everything else now. Lifelong restaurants, like just going out of business because you can't afford to run. Right. Because everything's more expensive too, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Labor, food, and you can't pass that on to the to the, the consumer because they don't have any money either. Right. You know, it's interesting too, and you probably do the math better than me. I know you would. They say now with inflation and, and prices that it's almost the same cooking at home and going out to eat. Is that no? I'm gonna I'm gonna correct you if you don't mind me. Yeah, it's cheaper to eat out now cheaper. than it is to it's eat in. Cheaper, okay. So that I mean, for me, I never ate out as a kid, maybe twice. So I'm overcompensating now. <laughs> so I love I love eating out. Uh, so I was I was privileged to I, I love the hearing that. But why is that? Why does the math add up that it's cheaper to go out? Because, because you buy it in bulk? Because, because we're buying, you know, instead of instead of 10 eggs, we're buying 140 eggs. Although a case of eggs used to be $40, it's now a buck 20 for a case of eggs in a restaurant, right? So it's tripled. The meat is tripled. So we're trying to find creative ways of pivoting with inexpensive meat. You know, you steakhouse, you got to have prime, right? you got to go and, and, and do these things. But with, with mom and pop restaurants that can create the menu, reduce the menu from 28, 38 items to 18 and rotate that being more or, or less expensive, you know, um, braising product that's tough to make it soft. You know, short rib used to be uh, the most inexpensive meat like lobster. Lobster used to be prison food. Good luck trying to get lobster in prison now, but... So, so we're trying to adapt and pivot that food based on what we can spend that week. So they say right now, uh, food prices are expected to rise another 7% in 2023. So that prices goes up everywhere. And then if you have to also have to get labor costs up because people are in competition for less people. Robert Irvine is going to continue and go over not just food, but just some principles that will help you become a better leader and a better worker. Uh, Back in a moment. And by the way, the name of Robert Irvine's book is called Overcoming Impossible. Don't move. So Robert Irvine's here. You know I'm host of the Food Network. You also know him all over the channels. Got a great reality show. Takes on John Taffer and another one as they look to revive uh, restaurants and see who does better. His book is out uh, this week. It's called Overcoming Impossible. 
uh, learn to lead, build a team, and catapult your business to success. So what are some of the leadership things that you've learned along the way? You said you learned a lot by making mistakes. Number one, I think for me was the ego, right? I When I got into business, I, I worked for Donald Trump for four years. I was his executive chef in Atlantic City, and he said to me, quote, unquote, do whatever you need to do uh, to make money. He was making $784 million a year in, in the casino and $15 million on food and beverage. And I said, okay, but I need to do this, this, and this. He said, do it. Uh, our first year, we went from 15 million to 83 million, and I was like the golden child. Um, I had a great life there. He, he was really good to me. Um, and I think changing, not trusting, is 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 one of the things I is one of the pillars in the book. And I say, look, I didn't believe in the purchases. I didn't believe in the loading dock. I didn't believe in because we would have trucks of of Alaskan king crab legs pull up. The cab would leave, and ten minutes later, another cab would pick it up and disappear. And there was no footage. You know, I, I mean, it was ridiculous. So for me, I learned to hold people accountable, double check, triple check, put systems in place that those trucks couldn't take out without somebody being there. And, and so I think it's putting systems in place, understanding the people, and hiring the people. That was the biggest thing for me. Because I thought I knew it all, and I don't, um, and I understand that now. But it took me ten years to figure that out. <laughs> right? You know, hire people that are smarter than you, and and we have, you know, the protein bars, the liquor, all those things that we do now in our foundation at, that do really well. In eight years, I mean, Fit Crunch is a two hundred million dollar company because I hire people better than me. Right. And I think they're the biggest lessons that you 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 learn is hey look you may be good at one or two things but if you don't understand it it's okay just like you said a second it's okay to say i don't get it and bring in people that do get it right they can explain it and you can learn it uh i remember captain kirk had spock who was smarter than him but do you know who the captain was <laughs> right so that you need you need experts around you so what kind of uh, boss was Donald Trump? It was great for you. It was great for me. I got to tell you, look, I, I look. I don't. I, more, I, I went to Atlantic City. They all say the same thing. I had a great thing because he allowed me to do uh, what I do and report to him and do the things that that I needed to do to make him money um, and change things. And he allowed me to change the purchasing. He changed all those things. It was a good thing for me. Um, he never had anything to do. I would go up, he would come in, I'd say, this is where we are, this is, you know, I remember he wanted to change the meat um, in the steakhouses and whatnot, and I said, well, if you put prime in every restaurant, it's gonna cost you another $6 million. And I said, how about I just do this, season the meats across the board, and you try it, and you pick it, and you tell me what you want. He picked choice. <laughs> He did. Okay. <laughs> so, so you know, you know what you know and you, know, you don't know what you don't know, right? Uh, and he had a great team around. And Nick Ribbis was there and all these other uh, uh, great folks. So for me, my experience um, mm -hmm. of working for him at Taj Mahal was really good. You, had a, you have a Pentagon contract. Yes. So, and you're able to see a lot of the men and women serve on a regular basis. And, you know, it, you make money, but still, you love being a part of this. I love, look, the military to me, and I'm a, look, I come from England. I became a citizen 12, 14 years ago. I pay my taxes, I vote, and I love the military. I travel 150 days a year to be around them and make sure they know that we care, we cook, we work out, we do the USO tours. I, I have a, a program in my foundation, the Robert Irvine Foundation, called Breaking Bread for Heroes at every base, uh, uh, at a base every week, two or three times a week, no matter where it is. We feed anywhere from 600 to 1,000 airmen or Marines or whatever. I just think that, that we have the best military in the world and we have to give them the best and let them know that the best uh, training and food and, and their families behind them. So, yeah, I mean, it's like I asked Mark Milley when he was the chief of the army, could I, could I re-enlist at 50? And he's like, no, you're too old. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you'd be a great soldier. I mean, man, your fitness. Real quick, you, you watched the Ukrainians training with the Americans on the High Mars. Yeah, it was unbelievable. We were in Germany uh, at what they call the box. And it's interesting because it's where we take original Russian tanks, we fit them. Uh, with a new turret, and it's where we play electronic tag with tanks. 
uh, and and Justin and my team, we got to play out there and, and these in black. Everything's in black. They wear black overalls, and uh, it was unbelievable to watch this this tank movements. And if you've never been in a tank, they're rough as hell. But it's amazing to play this game. Right. Wow. Um, and I watched the Ukrainians teach the Americans how to fix trucks. So and, resourceful. And those, yeah, amazing. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.